Okay, welcome to Rogue Antarctica. <laughs> okay, do me a favor, everyone. Um, medyo, just check on your neighbor, kasi baka frozen na siya. <laughs> so, check, check nyo lang siya, kurut kurutin nyo lang. Baka frozen na sila. Okay? So, uh, tulong tulong lang tayo, no? <laughs> <laughs> Grabe sa ginaw. Nagalit sila. Hallelujah. All right, I'm happy to be back in the English service. Parang ang tagal kong wala dito. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Whew. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity, Lord, to share your word this afternoon. Be with us. Lord, overtake my preparation. It's all about you. Have your way. Hide me behind your glory, Lord. Speak to every heart. Transform us from the inside out. Who, Holy Spirit, hover heavily over us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord the best clap offering. Hallelujah. All right. The, what I'm going to share today. Today is Mission Sunday. If you didn't know, tell your neighbor, Uy, Mission Sunday ngayon. <laughs> Have you heard of the saying uh, you don't know what you're living for until you know what you're willing to die for? Oh, nothing political there. <laughs> it's about it's about the Lord. Who here knows deep in your heart that you are living for the Lord? Do you know what you're willing to die for? Oh, hallelujah. But there are, many, there are many compelling reasons why we live for the Lord, but none as compelling as His imminent return. No? Malapit yung nalalapit na pagbabalik ng Panginoon. You know why? Lately, I've had a lot of deaths around you know, our circle. Just January, we lost our Tito to cancer. February, we lost our cousin to cancer. March, we lost a very good friend to cancer. And um, the week after that, our friend's mother also passed. And some other people that, mga acquaintances, dami rin, maybe three of them passed. And it's not even the end of March. I don't know about you, but, you know, my friends are, like, scared now. And they want, like, uh, di ba tayo babalik sa prayer meeting? <laughs> Parang nakakatakot na daw, guys. Parang ito na daw yung age na kinukuha na kami. <laughs> In Jesus' name, I'm only 43. <laughs> wag na, wag na tayo magpataas ng kamay. Joke lang. <laughs> wag na, wag na. Hallelujah. But before Jesus ascended to heaven, He left a very important commission to all of us. And it excludes no one. And we all know this by heart. Matthew 28, uh, 18 to 20, it says, <laughs> All authority in heaven has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you till the end of the age. We all know that. Kahit tayo natutulog, along with Malachi 3.10, alam natin yan, if you're from ROG. Now, but let me, that is the Great Commission. Okay, what is the greatest commandment? Just for everyone's review for the whole day. <laughs> what is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Correct? Okay, so we have the great commission and we have the greatest commandment. Those two things are great in the eyes of God. Amen? Now, what is mission? Mission is a much broader uh, concept than the great commission. The great commission is just part of mission. Mission is the dynamic, uh, the dynamic process by which God will transform, okay, the earth that He Himself created, now spoiled, no? because why? Na spoil yung, yung creation ng Lord because of what? Sin. 
okay, na na-spoil, na-defile by the powers of evil into the new heaven and to new earth of God's redeemed creation. So God's mission is what will fill the gap between the defiled creation and the new creation. Yun ang process na gagamitin ni Lord, yung mission na yan. Okay? Now, kiyap tirap tiyapin natin yan. So, the Bible has its roots in mission. Okay? I didn't know this, to be honest with you, until I took the Kairos training. I didn't realize that, I didn't realize that there is a Bible because of the mission of God. Nauna muna ang mission, kaya may mission dahil may, kaya may Bible dahil may mission. Because of the fall of man, God desires now to redeem what was defiled, to redeem back to Him, to restore back to Himself. Now, the Bible is the story of God's global mission. Everybody say, God's global mission. Now, when we talk about mission, we always think na we, we just refer to the missionaries. Ay, mission. Sila, sila lang yan. You know, may asawa ako, may pamilya ako. I'm not part of it. You know, I have a family. I have like this. I have like that. Hindi ako parte dyan. Now, that's the wrong connotation. The mission, God's mission, if you are truly sons of God. Let me see, raise the hands of the true sons of God here. Hallelujah. If you are true sons of God, then the heart of the Father must be your heart. His heartbeat must be your heartbeat. If you have a different heartbeat, just like Bishop was saying this morning, okay, si Jonah, Jonah got eaten up by the world system, and so he started running away from his calling. But if you are a son, this is part of your calling. Tell your neighbor, this is part of our calling. Now, so the Bible now, presents Israel with a mission. There is a mission for Israel. The Israel was supposed to be not just being the sent one, but being the agent of God's blessing to the, nat to the nation. Everybody say to the nation. Amen. So the Bible presents now Jesus with a mission and Jesus claims that he has been sent. Tama ba? Jesus says, I have been sent by my father. Tama? So when he is sent, why? To fulfill God's purposes for Israel and to fulfill God's saving purpose for humanity. Bakit? Bakit kailangan i-save ang humanity? Because in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Because we are all destined to go to hell because none of us could live up to the standards of God. You understand? None of us here. Now, God's heart has always been for the people. In Genesis 12, can we go to... Uh, the, by the way, the title of my sermon is God's Heart for All. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord, 1, 2, 3, can we read it together? 1, 2, 3, Go. Verse 2. So we think uh, the mission started in the New Testament. It actually started in the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis. And Abraham is the first missionary. Okay? Because the Lord told him to go. No? He packed up his stuff. He was a wealthy man. And he went where the Lord wanted him to go. Not knowing where the Lord, at that time, where the Lord wanted him to go. Now, where is the gospel there? Can we go to Galatians 3, 8? It says there, diba, the blessing. We have blessed to be a blessing. The usual understanding of this verse, it's a blessing, like financial blessing. The Lord has blessed, He will bless you to become a blessing. While that is also true, this is the context of, the original context of it is that, can you read one, two, three? 
What's more, the scriptures looked forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in His sight because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when He said, All nations will be blessed through you. So the blessing that is being referred to in Genesis is what? The good news. The good news. So yung pagpapala na dadaloy, the blessing, is God's gift, salvation. That will pass through Abraham and his descendants hanggang umabot sa atin. So, can we go to the Genesis 2-3? Genesis 2 na tayo. Uh, yung 12-2, yan. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you in the context of the, the salvation and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Three. Can we go to three? I will bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, and in you all, in you, in Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen? That's why in Acts 16.30, believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. So pag ang salita ng Diyos, the message of God, ay umabot sa isang pamilya, that the family receives it, you can claim that promise that that household will be saved. Amen? Amen. Now, that's the whole purpose of God. Remember, that uh, this is a binila. The, it's just the Israelites. It's just the Israelites. Let me tell, can we go to Galatians, the next verse? Galatians 3.29. Hindi kami kasali dyan. Nasa New Testament kami. Sabihin ng iba. <laughs> no. And now, basahin natin to ha. One, two, three. And now, that you belong to Christ, you are what? True children of Abraham. You are His heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to who? To you. The Abrahamic covenant now also belongs to you by virtue of Jesus Christ. Amen? Dahil anak ka ng Diyos, you have been grafted into the family of Christ. And so therefore, we are spiritual Israelites. And we are spiritual, we are seed of Abraham. Amen? So, nagko-qualify ka ngayon doon, hindi ka ngayon iba. Now, the mission has not changed even today because Abraham and Israel, they were not just intended to be just, you know, uh, dadaanan lang ng lineage, no? to transmit the lineage. No, it's not just for that. But, we, they were blessed in order to be a blessing by how? communicating. Everybody say communicating. God's gift to the world. So what is God's gift to the world? If the greatest problem of man is sin, therefore what is the greatest gift of God to humanity? Salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So in John 3.16, let me go to John 3.16. Everybody knows this. One, two, three. For God so loved the world. Okay, I have three points. Number one, the God that the world needs to know. Okay? Because now we are spiritual Israelites, part tayo ng Abrahamic covenant, therefore, we, yung mission na binigay is also our mission. Tell your neighbor, it's also my mission. Okay. We are to present to the world the God that the world needs to know. Why? Sinong Dios? Who is the God that the, the world knows? We, the world has false gods. The world has false gods. In Acts 17, it says, to the unknown God. Even the Greeks would call him the unknown God. Right? The God that we know. Can we go to Psalm 103, 3 to 6? Psalm 103. Who is this God that we are to know? 
One, two, three. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. So, the Siya yung tagapagpatawad. He is the forgiver. He is the healer. He is the redeemer. He is the blesser. He is the one who gives us mercies. The one who satisfies the very depths of your heart. The very, the very void. Yung pinaka-void. Yung butas ng puso mo. Ang nagsasatisfy dyan ay ang Panginoon. The world doesn't know that. The world doesn't know that. What the world knows from, you know, my previous religion, what we know is that this God is, I, I didn't know that He was relational, that He was interested in my life. I didn't know na may mga ina-attribute na mga nakakatakot na nangyayari, kagimbal-gimbal. <laughs> Nagbilagro daw ang ganyan. Di ba mga ganon? Lumaki tayo sa ganon. Out of fear. I never do, you know, relational love with, with the Lord. In Psalm 103, 8 to 10, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. I didn't know that. He will not always strive with us, nor will He keep His anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. This is the God that the world needs to know. He is slow to anger. He is abounding in love and mercy and compassion. This God that the world does not know is reaching out to the world through, wow, through us, through you and me. Now, if you are being deaf, to the prodding, if you're being insensitive to the prodding, pinopok ka na ni Lord, hoy, hoy, sharean mo, hoy, mahalin mo yan, hoy, patawarin mo yan, hoy, tumayo ka sa kino, o puwar mo sa LRT, sa MRT, bigay mo yan sa matanda. Magpakita ka ng galang at pagmamahal. Now, if you're too insensitive for that, you're not being a channel of God. How will the world know this God that we serve? How will the world know that we have a good God if the goodness of God is not seen in you? How will the world know that there is a God who loves them if love is not evident in you? How will the world know that there is a God willing to forgive them of all their sins if we cannot forgive? Who? And this God that the world needs to know. The world will tell you there are too many, there are many ways to God. Do not believe that. Do not believe that. Please, oh please, stop with the TikTok preachers. My goodness. Stop it already. Why? Stop with the TikTok preachers. Not all of them are legit. Not all of them are legit. Please. John 14, 6. You want the word, you want God to just tickle. You want a revelation? Open your Bible. Get on your knees. Close the door and close your eyes and close your, your heart to the, to, the, to the chaos around you. Shut the world and just commune with your God. Ibaba mo yung phone mo, wala sa phone mo ang sagot. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. There's no other God except through me. Amen. The world needs to know that. And you have to be bold. Because many people, there are teachers nowadays that they're saying that there are many ways to God. No, hello, the only door is through Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Amen. And, mag-ingat din kayo kahit nag-Jesus yan. Is it the Jesus of the Bible that we know? Baka sabihin, babae rin si Jesus kasi may God the Mother. I don't know if you've heard of that. The God that the world needs to know. You know, in Confucianism, 
and Buddhism, if, if you're a practitioner of Confu Confucianism, what do you follow? You follow the tenets. You follow the teaching. But you are not asked to have a relationship. The practitioners of Confucianism and Buddhism, they don't have a relationship with Buddha. They don't have a relationship with Confucius. But the God who created the heavens and the earth, imagine... And everything here that you see around you, this God is interested in your life. This God is interested in the very depths of your heart. He's interested in your love life. He is interested in your career, in your family life. He's interested in every detail of your being. The only problem is we shut God out because we want something else. Now, God is so good. That's the God that the world needs to know. That there is a God who is willing to rescue, to redeem, without question. Without question. Tinanong ka ba ni Lord? O sige, paano mo i-justify yung ginawa mo? How would you justify why you did what you did? God doesn't even ask that. If you come to Him, with a heart full of faith, with sincere repentance, no questions asked. The forgiveness that you're asking for, it's all yours. Ang tao, tatanungin ka pa, bakit mo nagawa yun? Ano? Di ba? May mga ganun pa tayo, bakit mo nagawa? God doesn't ask that. Number two, the gospel or the good news that the world needs to hear. The gospel that the world needs to hear is it's a gospel of full and free salvation through Jesus Christ alone. And the, be the very best part of it is that, can we go to the verse? John 3, 16. Can we go to the verse? For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that what? Whoever believes. There's no qualification for salvation. There's no qualification. You don't need it to have a college degree. You have a PhD, DMD, DDD, FDD, DVD. You don't need to have those to qualify for God's salvation, complete salvation. Because it is for whoever believes. The God who, Jesus who is fully God and fully man came to earth. To save humanity because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what did Jesus do? He died for our sins. So that we won't have to die. To save us so that once and for all in Hebrews, Jesus died for all. No more animals to be sacrificed. Jesus died for all. And when He comes back, it is no longer for to save us from sins. When Jesus comes, when He returns, returns, it's no longer to save us from sins, but it is for judgment. In the cross, that Jesus bought, He paid for our debts. He paid for all our sicknesses, all the curses. Cursed is the man who is hung on a tree. He took it all upon Himself. Why? Because He loves God and He loves us. It's not because of your titles. It's not because of what you do. Because you are best in ministry. Because you are best in the conference. You know, perfect attendance. No, no, no. When you receive the salvation that Christ has for you, you it cannot make you any more saved. All you need to do is to work out your salvation to ensure that you will get to heaven Amen. and that you won't backslide. And when you do, you can come back. Amen. And the grace, what's that? It's all by the grace of God. By grace through faith. In John 3.16, now why the gospel? For God so loved the world that He what, sent His only Son because God doesn't want anyone to perish but to come to repentance. Amen? Why? There are lost people in the world. I was once lost. Raise your hands if you were once lost. 
and now we are found. Hallelujah. San tayo pinulot ng Lord sa kangkungan? You know, we were spiritually dead in Ephesians 2. I'm just summarizing. In Colossians 1, we are what? Prisoners of darkness. And the Lord got us from the darkness and brought us into light. In Matthew 9.36, we are like sheep without a shepherd. We're lost. We have no direction. Taas ang kamay na walang direction sa buhay. Dati, hallelujah, that's you and me. Pero ngayon, may direction na, hallelujah! Woo! Come on! <laughs> Why? Because there's a terrible faith. Can we go to 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 to 9? In flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will be punished with eternal destruction, forever separated from the Lord, from His glorious power. This gospel that the world needs to hear must have an urgency because we don't know when our time is up. You don't know when your loved one's time is up. We need to act now if we don't want them to perish because if heaven is real, and so is hell. And hell has no exit. Some preachers, they're scared of preaching hell because, oh, it's too much. Ang morbid, morbid naman. I were full gospel, I'm sorry. We're full gospel. We don't pick out what's, you know, tickling your ears. We don't, we don't choose what we want to hear because the Word of God gives you everything. The problem is, I saw this post on Facebook. Christians, it's impossible for Christians to be salt and light if they keep sugar-coating the gospel. The gospel includes hell. The reality of hell. And never did Jesus hide that truth from us. If you read the Bible, it is very clear. Ang hirap kasi may nagbubulag-bulagan. Wouldn't you rather face the truth that people will go to hell if we don't share to them? And you know what? I'm sure the friend, the good friend that passed just a few weeks ago, they hid from us that she had cancer. She, she was diagnosed Feb, and then March patay na siya. Sabi ko, Lord, had I known. Had I known. Pero, yun na nga eh, hindi mo nga alam. There are things that people don't say, but they're going on. They have unspoken battles. So you don't know. So whether that person is showing signs, whether that person is showing red flags or not, it's always a green flag to share the word. Yeah. Now, wala na tayong excuse. Sabi ko, grabe, nagpunta kami ni Angelo. Sabi ko, oh, I wish we had known. We, I would have gone. I would have prayed. I, but, but, the, but her best friend is a, is a Christian. And I pray that somehow, na share niya. <sighs> and number three, the love that the world needs to see. This is beautiful. The love that the world needs to see. This love that I'm talking about, this is not the Jerry Maguire, you complete me. <laughs> if you complete me. It's not about that. Come on. Girls, don't fall for that. It's not true. If a guy tells you, you complete her, do you point him to the door? No one can complete us except the Lord. For all the single ladies, single ladies. <laughs> the only one who can complete you. Kaya yung mga looking dyan, dapat buo ka muna kay Lord. Amen. You must be Complete in the Lord first, and then He will come. Oh, di ba? All right. So the love that the world needs to see. The, this past few months, the Lord has been speaking to me about Hosea. Everybody knows? Kailan nyo ba si Hosea? Hosea was a contemporary of Isaiah. 
and Amos. So tatlo sila magkakakontemporary, magkakasabayan sila. Isaiah was a preacher in Judah, Amos and... Habot ako dyan. Amos and... <laughs> Amos, eh, pangalan niya to? <laughs> Hosea. <laughs> Gulat kasi ako sa time, sorry. Amos and Hosea, sila yung sa Northern Kingdom. Yung Northern Kingdom, that's where all the bad kings were. Yan yung mga pasaway. Okay? So, um, Hosea was called to preach there. And this is, some scholars, some scholars call this as the second, second. <laughs> <laughs> Second greatest love story in the Bible. The first being, of course, the incarnation of Jesus. The death and resurrection of Jesus. This is the second daw. Sabi ng ibang uh, scholars. Why? Okay. Let me, for the benefit of those who don't know what happened to Hosea. Hosea, one day, God told Hosea, Hosea, you gonna get married. <laughs> and I picked out a girl for you. In, can we go to Hosea? Asan na tayo? Ayan. When the Lord first began speaking to Israel, He said to him, Go and marry a... Okay, may mga bata ba? Okay. So that, PG muna tayo. <laughs> so that a prostitute, marry a prostitute so that some of our children will be conceived in prostitution. Okay. God, marry a prostitute. It didn't say... Okay, wag tayo magdadagdag bawas pag hindi sinulat sa Bible. Wag tayong gumawa ng kwento. <laughs> it didn't say if Isaiah, if Hosea was confused or what, uh, but if he was also human, I know, siguro nagtaka siya kahit papano. Wow. During the time, God would use action sermons. It illustrate, God would illustrate because of the the intensity of the wickedness of the 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 environment, God used His prophets to demonstrate. Yung kaya yung actual life nila may prophetic meaning. Okay? So now, Hosea, God said, marry a prostitute. And then so, kinasal si Gomer. Si Gomer is the name of the girl. Ha? Nakakalito, di ba? Hosea, parang siya yung babae. Hindi. Si Hosea po yung lalaki. Si Gomer po yung prostitute. Now, it doesn't say, it didn't say, if Gomer really was a prostitute already, or, or she would be, okay? But at any rate, the Lord put them together, and they got married, and th- let me just kwento ha, mahaba. And then, uh, they got married, and uh, they bore uh, three kids, two boys and one girl, okay? Now, each of those names may mga story pa yon, but let me just focus on the love story because that's my point, okay? Now, after the, the birth of the third child, soon after, Gomer started, we started to see the fulfillment of the prediction that she would be unfaithful to her husband. And then she said, one day, I'm going to leave you and I'm going to go after the man that I really want. After three kids. And in between, it is implied that she would sleep around. At one point, in Hosea 2, 2, 2, yun ba yun? Mm-mm. At one point, Hosea said, Rebuke your mother, rebuke her, for she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Let her remove the adulterous look from her face and the unfaithfulness from between her breasts. In short, nakikipaghiwalay na rin si Hosea dahil I cannot take it anymore. I cannot. I cannot be a husband. Paulit-ulit. It's one thing na isang beses. Pero if it's happening over and over and over dahil tao lang si Hosea. Hosea was just a man even though he was a prophet. He was still a man. And at some point, he wanted no. No. Two, five. Their mother has been unfaithful and she has conceived them in disgrace. The, the second son is in imply, implied that hindi siya kay Hosea. Okay? And she said, I will go after my lovers who give me food and water, my wool and my linen, my olive oil and my drink. It picture
pictures us, the spiritual adulterers. Hosea here is God. Israel, si Gomer. And how many times, just like what Bishop was talking about earlier, we follow our idols. How many times have we hurt God? Have we been unfaithful to God? Because we wanted things differently. Because we wanted to follow our flesh. We wanted to follow our ambitions apart from the Lord. Walang masama sa ambition sa pangarap mo, but it has to be aligned with what God wants for your life. Walang masama to work. Nothing bad there. But you have to be where God wants you to be. And when you are rebelling, you have a different direction in life. It's like a slap in God's face. It's your saying, we are saying that God, what you have for me, I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's going to satisfy. I'm going to go after my lovers, the world, who will give me my wool, my linen, my oil, and everything I need. Gusto ko ng lifestyle eh. But pag sumusunod ako, when I follow you, Lord, parang walang pera. Bakit pag nasa mundo ako, bakit parang ang saya ng buhay? It doesn't it sound like a preacher's wife, parang ganon, preacher's wife slept around, pang, pang Jerry Springer, yung parang, di ba? It was like a prostitute. My goodness. And you can imagine how Hosea must have felt because after all, he's still a man. That the wife he loved, the wife he promised he would be faithful to. There was a vow made in front of God that you will be faithful yet that faithfulness was broken just because. There is an appetite. There is an urge for something that you feel your husband cannot provide or your spouse cannot provide or worse, what that God cannot provide. And you look for it from different men or we look from it from different women or we look from it from the world. We look, hinahanap mo. And God used this an illustration as an illustration of his own relationship. What happened? I will jump in Hosea 3.1. Then the Lord said to me, here's the thing. Go and love your wife again, even though she commits adultery with another lover. Go and love your husband again. Go and love your daughter again. Go and love your pastor again. Go and love your neighbor again. Go and love your sibling again. Again, again. Oh, sakit. Three, two. So I bought her back for 15 pieces of silver and five bushels of barley and a measure of wine. This is not much. What happened was, si, si Gomer, because she was hopping from men, 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 naubusan na siya, most likely she sold herself into slavery that, that Hosea needed to be in the marketplace para tubusin siya, to redeem her, to buy her back. And her price was so cheap. Wala na siyang value. Ginamit na eh. Nilapastangan na ng mundo. Wala nang value. How many of you felt like you were so hopeless already that the world used you, abused you, and hurt you how many times? Why? It's because of our own doing. Because ayo natin magising, we won't wake up to our senses. Many of us are like that, just like the prodigal son. 
We're so lost. We're in the far off country. Because what? There is an appetite in your flesh that just wanted to get out. That just wanted to do what it wanted to do. And us, anong choice mo? It's just, sige, bigay rin. Bigay hilig rin. But you know what? Hosea had to pay to get her back. And it was pitifully small, the amount. Nobody wanted Gomer anymore except her husband, Hosea. And no matter, remember, no matter how low we sink, God will always want you back. No matter how far you get out of this life, God will always want you back. He will never write you off. Hindi ka niya tatanggalin. Hindi ka niya... He will always want to redeem. He will always want to reach out. He will always want to lift you up. He will always want to have you beside Him. He will always want you in His presence. Dirty, clean, kahit nga marumi ka, lilinisin ka ng Panginoon. And what happened? Hosea pledged her love anew. So ni redeem niya, nag-reconcile there is full restitution. Full redemption. So what am I saying here? This is the kind of love that we are called to. Minsan nga, you don't need the signs and wonders. Yes, it's part of that, and this sign shall follow. Yes. But you know what? The true mark of a child of God, of a disciple, the true mark of a son of God, is love. This furious kind of love. This love that won't relent. It's a relentless kind of love. No matter what you do, it strives to forgive. It forgives and forgive and forgive and love and understand. Because, sabi nga, those who love much has been forgiven much. God will always want you back. God will always want you back. And God wants us to join Him in loving the world. That's why in Matthew 4, 43, let's take it up in the New Testament. You have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For He gives us sunlight to both in evil and good and sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, it's so easy to love those who love us. They give us gifts. Diba? They have kind words to us. Diba? Pinagahanda ka, pinagbabirthday ka, niriregaluan ka. Oh my God, it's so easy to love them. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of people who are difficult to love in my life. And I, I don't know. But the Lord has been talking to me to be a Hosea. God loves even when His love is unrequited or unreturned. Hindi mo nga binabalik eh. Hindi mo naman kaya ibalik ng buo. But even when your love is unreturned. But God demonstrates His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Forgiveness had been made available. Rebelde ka pa. But all you needed to do was to come to Him. Amen? And that's the call for the church. If the church does not stand, does not emulate this kind of love, saan pa pupunta ang mundo? If the church does not emulate this kind of love, where will the lost people go? Where will the broken people go? They will just be judged. Remember, you are not called to judge. You are called to love. Leave the judging to God. He is the judge. But do not compromise. You love, tolerance is different. But now, you may not be a, not maybe all, not all are called to be missionaries, but all are called to be missional. To bring this kind of love 
to the far ends of the earth. To your family, first and foremost, to the people of the same culture, to our friends, at palabas ng palabas. Do you need to go out these days? You don't even need to go out these days. You have what? Social media. You can do Zoom. You can do counseling over there. Distance is not a problem anymore. But the question is, do you have the heart for it? How do we take part? You can either be a sender, you can be a prayer, a mobilizer, or a goer. So find what you are. In 2 Corinthians 5, remember, we are given the ministry of reconciliation. Tell your neighbor, we have the ministry of reconciliation. In Romans 10, 14, how can they all call to him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if no one's ever heard about him? Paano may maniniwala kung walang pumupunta para mag-preach? Amen? And how will they hear him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? Us, we need to be sent. We need to be goers on our own way in our digital. We're digital missionaries nowadays. Amen? And this kind of love, this kind of Hosea, we know the father-son love, but this is also God's illustration, yung intimacy of, of a married couple, of the bride and the bridegroom. Now it says here, I'll end here. Holy uh, worship team. Brothers and sisters, if you have received this kind of love from the Lord, the Hosea kind of love, it doesn't matter where, how far you've gone from the Lord. It doesn't matter how, what you've done. It doesn't matter how long you've been away. But what's important is you're, you're here. What's important is you're here and you want God and you seek Him with all your heart. And when you have received that, remember that you are not called to just enjoy that forgiveness. You're supposed to go out there and do something and share. In Luke 14, 23, I don't think I gave this, but go out into the highways and hedges and compel, obligahin mo, make them come in, compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. That's the parable of the, uh, the feast. In open ni Lord, He opened the way for all. Everybody say all. The gospel is for all. There's neither Greek, no Jews, no slaves, or all. Amen? Every tribe, every tongue will confess. But how will they know what to confess if we don't share? It's time to go out there to tell the world that there is a God that they need to know. That there is a gospel that they need to hear. And that there is this great love that they need to see. I challenge you today. I challenge you today to come. Let's all stand. Most of you here have been here a long time. How many people have we brought to the Lord? How many people have we shared the gospel to? Is the love of God evident in your life? Because before we share the good news, we must be the good news. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord.
the altar is open we want to pray for you I have a call for those who still have wounds and are having a hard time dealing with forgiveness in their lives it's so hard to bring people to the Lord when you are hurt when you are wounded because wounded people hurt people it's nothing to be shamed, ashamed about we all get that so I invite you to come and if you want to be used by God come you want to be used by God you want an anointing you want the boldness and the courage to reach out to your loved ones to message them to say that you're sorry and that I have something great to share to you Jesus come we want to come we want to pray for you come if you need restoration come if you need empowerment come pastors here I am and here I stand Lord my life is in your hands Lord I'm longing to see
give myself to you. Declare this to the Lord. My life is not for you. Yes, God. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Just raise your hands. We want to pray for you. Mm, I saw throat. I saw a throat. And there's bubbling up during in the throat. The Lord is healing whatever is. If online, you got problem with your throat or esophagus, the Lord is healing that now. May hands there. Somebody pray for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just lift up, Lord God, our brothers and sisters right now. We rebuke every sickness and disease in these bodies in the name of Jesus. And we declare complete healing, Lord, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet. By your stripes, we are healed. Mayoma, I heard the word Mayoma. If anyone has myoma, it's now disintegrating. In Jesus' name, claim your healing. If you have myoma, the Lord is stopping that bleeding. Mm. And that myoma is disintegrating right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive your healing in faith. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord the best clap offering. 